Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, uh, as Mr. Dimitri said, my name is Mike McElroy. I'm an assistant solicitor for Barville. I'm charged with assisting them in opposing the proposed Invenergy power plant. The town of Barville does not want this plant. It would be a polluting monster that would violate the town's comprehensive plan and its zoning ordinances. It would negatively impact the quality of life of all Barville residents. The town is already burdened with the Ocean State Power Plant that was forced on the town by the state, and it is also burdened by the Spectre Gas Compressor Station that was forced on the town by the federal government. The town believes it is already sacrificing enough to help meet the state's energy needs. This council has an extremely important decision to make. It is your decision, however. You already provide water to Ocean State Power Plant in Borough. You must now decide whether to provide water for the construction of another power plant in Borough. And we thank you very much for listening to Borough's concerns about this proposed project. With regard to the status of the application, you may already know this, but in October of 2015, Invenergy Thermal Development filed an application with the Energy Facility Siting Board. The application seeks approval for a natural gas-fired electric power facility that will be known as the Clear River Energy Center. It will be located in Barville on Wallam Lake Road. The facility would generate approximately 850 to 1,000 megawatts of power. As the host town for the facility, Barville intervened in the EFSB proceedings. We have told the EFSB that Barville does not want this plant and that it should not be permitted under any circumstances. In order to protect its interests, if the EFSB, over the town's strenuous objections, nevertheless permits the power plant, the town negotiated a tax agreement and a decommissioning agreement with Invenergy. The town also negotiated a property value agreement that would take effect if the plant was permitted. The town is strongly opposed to the proposed facility and is vigorously fighting it at the EFSB. The town asked the EFSB to dismiss the application recently because of the lack of a water source. However, instead of dismissing the application, the EFSB suspended it until January 11th, pending receipt of additional information from Energy regarding a water source. The town's motion to dismiss remains pending while the matter is suspended. Depending on the final water report filed by Invenergy, the EFSB has options available to it which it could exercise on or about January 11th or thereafter. <clears throat> Under Rule 1.15 of the EFSB's rules, the EFSB could cancel the suspension if the EFSB feels that Invenergy has located a satisfactory water source. If the EFSB exercises this option, the process for adjudicating Invenergy's application will continue to move forward from the point at which it was suspended. <clears throat> If the EFSB finds that Invenergy has not found a satisfactory water source, then the EFSB could give Invenergy an extension, or the EFSB could dismiss Invenergy's application, either with or without prejudice. If the EFSB decides to dismiss Invenergy's application with prejudice, then Invenergy would never be able to refile its application for this proposed power plant. However, Invenergy would, of course, have the right to appeal the EFSB's dismissal of the application to the Rhode Island Supreme Court. Some have suggested that the tax agreement we entered into is inconsistent with opposition to this plan. However, I submit respectfully that the tax agreement does not dis diminish the town's pledge to fight to kill the plan. In fact, the contrary is true. The agreement increases the town's ability to properly fund the fight. The summary of the tax agreement and some of the reasons Barville entered into it is as follows. First, the tax agreement avoids costly litigation. By entering into this proposed tax agreement, the town avoids costly and unpredictable tax assessment litigation if the EFSB permits the plan. The town would incur significant legal and expert witness fees, and the outcome of any tax litigation would be uncertain. Moreover, to the extent Invenergy prevailed in any tax litigation, the town would need to refund whatever portion of the collected taxes the court determined was in excess of fair market value, plus annual interest at the rate of 12%. Barville recently spent over a half a million dollars on legal and expert witness fees 
and successfully fighting tax challenges by Ocean State Power on the Ocean State Power Plant in Barbara. In fact, when Sockett recently spent over $350,000 in legal and expert fees successfully fighting Ocean State Power challenges with regard to the pumping station located here in Barbara. So when Sockett knows the amount of time that it takes to fight these challenges and the amount of money that it takes to fight these challenges, um, and uh, both Ocean State Power matters, both in Barterville and in Woonsocket, eventually resulted in tax agreements, which is the best way to go on a facility like this. The second reason is that it provides us with upfront fees. The proposed tax agreement provides for payments to the town that would be made available to the town prior to the commercial operation of the facility. These fees are being used to vigorously fund, to fund, to fund the vigorous opposition by the town to the plan. The town intends to relentlessly fight the plant at the EFSB, in the Supreme Court if necessary, and in every other forum where we can. In fact, just at the EFSB alone, Invenergy has already identified 19 expert witnesses who will testify. These include six engineers, three PhDs, and 10 other professionals in various areas. To kill this plant, we must fight fire with fire. This requires us to have our own experts who will work with the town to oppose the plan. These experts and lawyers are very expensive. This agreement funds that. The third uh, reason is full taxability. The tax agreement assures the town that the plan, if approved, and only if approved, will be fully taxable, and it eliminates various legal arguments that Invergy has already made uh, in an attempt to escape or reduce taxation for all or a portion of the plan. The fourth agreement is that the agreement, the fourth reason is that the agreement has been set up so that it's fully binding on any future owners. If Invergy decides to sell the plant, the plant, or the right to develop the plant to another owner down the road, this agreement becomes fully binding on them. We would not have that provision uh, if we did not have a tax agreement. And finally, state aid is important. When Barville could not reach agreement with Ocean State Power on an extension of the old tax agreement, Barville had to place them on the tax roll. This impacted Barville's state aid. If the EFSB approves the plan and we do not have a tax agreement in place, we could again potentially suffer a negative impact on our school state aid if we just simply put the plan on the tax roll. So these are the main reasons why we entered into that. And again, I respectfully submit that these reasons are completely consistent with our vigorous opposition to the plan. And after I uh, finish, which is just about done, I would be happy to answer any and all questions you may have. Uh, before that, however, Mr. Dimitri pointed out that we have retained many consultants to advise Barville on the issues presented by Invenergy's application. And we have with us today both a hard copy of all of the consultant reports we have received and all of these have been put on a thumb drive so that if you want to distribute it uh, by email or print them out, we have that available. I'd like to bring that up to give to your clerk. Um, and I also have 25 copies of the statement that I've just read, if you would like to distribute. Please, thank you. Could I bring it up? Absolutely. Again, thank you very much for hearing us, and uh, if there are any questions now or any time during this process, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you.